Хорон цуларсан нөхөдөө мин буцала. Хори нүлэмс нүдийг мин бүрхлээ. Хүн хүн дандас тагийн адилар. Хүн хүн дэн дастаг юм байж дэ. Санаа нийлсэн нөхөдөө мин буцала. Сархтын шил ширэн дээр үлдлээ Сэтгэл зүрхний хайр та чи мэн Сэмхэн тэднийг дагон одлоо Үсэлэний сэн нөхөд мэн буцала Хөр баяраар тэдэн тэ ганцаар хоцорлоо ажлын ирсэн нөхөд мин буцала асарах нөлөөс нүдийг мин бүрхлээ ангир ангир дагуулдагийн адилар амдрал хүнийг дагуулдаг юм байж Here, in the middle of the vast mountain steppe of Mongolia, large stones mark ancestral graves. They bear nameless testimony to a bygone civilization. Asiatic Huns, Uyghurs and other early Turkic peoples settled here and buried their warriors. On the fertile banks of the Orkhon lay the centers of great bygone steppe kingdoms. And at the heart of this land of nomads stood a legendary city, which briefly was the most powerful in the world. The waters of the Orkhon give life to the mountain steppe. Shrouded in legend, the sacred river meanders some 1,000 kilometers through the heart of Mongolia before flowing into Lake Baikal. Providing a livelihood, livestock have grazed on its banks for thousands of years. Living here means adapting to nature, to vast distances, and a wilderness without paths, to winters as cold as 50 below, to biting winds and dust-filled summers. The Orkhon Valley, the heartland of the people of the steppe. In the 13th century, the ancestors of the present-day nomads forged a world empire that stretched from the Pacific to the Mediterranean. It would be almost impossible for sedentary civilizations to survive in regions where life still means moving from one place to another with mobile yurts. As they have done for centuries, people here live from breeding livestock, wandering from pasture to pasture. Yet these nomads also built solid structures. As early as the 8th century, 12-metre-high walls made of unfired clay bricks protected a city which is believed to have had more than 10,000 inhabitants, Kara Balgasu, the capital of the Uyghurs. Visible from afar, the fortress signalled wealth and power. Kara Balgasu was an early trading centre on the Silk Route. But we know little of the architecture of the steppe kingdoms, who left structures you would not expect of nomadic peoples. Horses and horsemanship formed the basis of a steppe culture, of a mobile way of life, marked by modest self-sufficiency. 
mare's milk and horse's blood could sustain warriors who, in the Middle Ages, spread terror throughout Europe. In the 13th century, the world watched spellbound as the Mongols on their ponies established the biggest land empire in history. At the time, one of Genji's Khan's advisers warned him that one can forge an empire on the back of a horse, but one cannot administer it from there. The world was once ruled from places where archaeologists now salvage ruins. For centuries, the grass of the steppe covered what, in its heyday, was the most powerful city in the world, Karakorum, the capital of Genji's Khan and his sons. Founded in 1220, the year of the dragon, it was the center of the Mongols' world empire. The nomads had little experience of building cities. After all, they were nearly always away on their horses on military expeditions. But there were enough specialists available from conquered regions. Archaeologists have especially found evidence of Chinese influence. The extensive city had districts for merchants and craftsmen. But Karakorum was not only a commercial and administrative focal point, it was also a religious centre with a mosque and a Christian church. But the predominant faith was early Buddhism. Hundreds of tiny decorated stupas made of clay have been found under the drift sand in the temple. More than 10,000 people, it's believed, lived in Karakorum all year round. Excavation work has shown that the city of the nomads had a spacious layout. A stone turtle, a symbol of eternity and a long life. It bore an inscription referring to the palatial city. But it is still a mystery where the palace of the Mongolian great Khans actually stood. And what happened to the incredible riches which the mounted hordes seized on their length in military expeditions? Today, the wall of a monastery stands next to a field of temple ruins. Is this where the palace of the great Khans was once located? A 13th century witness of the times described in rich detail a palace built on columns in which milk, spirits and honey flowed out of a silver tree. Excavations under the monastery walls have revealed an older wall and there is every indication that it can only belong to the long-sought palace of Genji's Khan. So the splendidly described palatial city lay exactly where the monastery is located today. Built in 1586, it was the first Buddhist monastery in Mongolia. The name, Erdenezu, means hundred treasures. At one time, 62 temples for more than 10,000 monks stood here in a large rectangle, bounded by walls adorned with stupas. Edenizu is again a place of meditation. Yet not all that long ago, the monastery was deserted. With its three storeys and wooden decoration, the central monastery temple in the Orkhon Valley was based on Tibetan models. Relations with Tibet go back many centuries. The title of Dalai Lama was first offered by a Mongolian prince in the 16th century. 
Since then, most Mongolians have been adherents of the Yellow Hat Buddhism of the Tibetan school. Monasteries and Lama monks shaped religious and social life in Mongolia for hundreds of years. They took the place of schools, universities and hospitals, and every family sent at least one son to be educated in a monastery. In keeping with ancient nomadic traditions, the monks also gather in yurts to pray. Through the repetition of mantras and words of praise, and through meditation and rhythm, they focus their minds for two hours each day in order to detach themselves from worldly existence. In the heart of Mongolia, a gentle, popular Buddhism exists which incorporates the ancient natural religion and veneration of the gods. It's not all that long since monks were again allowed to blow a conch shell in honor of the Buddha. For more than 50 years, religion was banned in Mongolia. In the period of Soviet domination, nearly all the monasteries were destroyed, including the most beautiful of all, Edene Zoo. Today, once again, young monks can be seen. But most of the ritual objects and precious holy books in Sanskrit have been lost. People were not even allowed to say the word Buddha. Monks were murdered, imprisoned or forced into the army. The new generation are only gradually learning to master the ancient rituals. Since the collapse of the Soviet Empire and the true independence this brought to Mongolia, religion has again found its place in society. Buddhism is experiencing a renaissance. Monastery buildings are being renovated all over the country. In keeping with ancient traditions, the faithful again walk round the hundred stupas on the walls of Edene Zoo. Carrying books from the monastery library, they symbolically retread the Buddha's path of suffering. In doing so, they also hope that their wishes will be fulfilled. For present-day Mongolians, Erdene Zoo is a holy place, but also a place of national identity. Today, the great-great-grandchildren in the city of Genghis Khan lead modest lives. The great empires of the past have little impact on them. Their enemies are unemployment and boredom, but such foes are easily defeated. <laughs> 